All right. Well, good morning to you. Good to see everybody out. We'll be like the uh, like Peter. We were in First Peter chapter three today. Finally made it to chapter three, and Peter wrote a letter to those that were scattered abroad. So, how fitting today. <laughs> Uh, those Christians that were scattered abroad. So anyway, I won't do you like Brother Easter and have everybody sitting in the first couple of rows or so, but it's good to see you today. So this is good because it gives, gives my neck exercise to look out over, over the congregation. All right, First Peter chapter 3, and we'll read uh, four verses uh, this morning uh, with First Peter chapter 3, and then we'll go back, read some verses that we had earlier uh, on uh, in this past month. And so good to, to have these studies where we've got this thought about what the Lord told Peter in Luke chapter 22, to strengthen thy brethren. And so we've been trying to do that, trying to be strong uh, ourselves so that we can in turn strengthen our brethren. I think the, the teaching of the Lord still applies today. And so I believe that we ought to be strong as Christians and strong in our faith that we can in turn help others to be strong in their faith. And so I believe that's to be very important. And we ought to have as a goal... Um, not selfishly now for us to be strong, but as a goal to be in the way that we can help others in the way of Jesus Christ and in his word and in his will. And so we want to do that. First uh, Peter chapter three, and let's read the first four verses. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price." And so we want to look at some things this morning, may, may just uh, touch into a few things, but we want to look at this uh, idea of the wife, as Peter says, likewise, ye wives. And so we want to, to uh, have a message about that. And uh, as we look into these things, you know, we've had uh, kind of a little uh, subtitle of sorts. And so the title would be The Wife Who Wins. The wife who wins, and as a subtitle, be strong in your home. Be strong in your home. And so I, I believe that the Lord does want us to be strong in the home, and then that goes out into the world. And so the world does need Jesus Christ. There's still plenty of people that are lost and dying in their sins and that need Jesus Christ, need to be saved, and then they could be strengthened also. And so um, without going too far into that, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll get into our message this morning. Heavenly Father, do thank you so much for another opportunity to be in your house today. Thank you for the good spirit already uh, in our opening uh, service, and I pray that that will carry over into Sunday school now and into the preaching service. I pray that uh, we that are here and those that will be joining uh, with us and, and be back with us even in the auditorium that uh, the spirit will be good today as your Holy Spirit helps us and guides us in your truth. And so I pray for uh, wisdom, pray for understanding as we uh, dive into your word that you would help us with some things uh, today, make us stronger people for you so that we can help others to be strong in their faith and their walk with you. Thank you for the opportunity to be saved. Thank you for Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins, for the burial, for the resurrection, and I believe for the soon return. And uh, thank you for all the thoughts that you give to us uh, even day by day as we even look towards the sky, look to, in those clouds. 
even yesterday, as someone mentioned, uh, what do you think about that cloud right there? Just thank you, dear Lord, for the precious promises and that blessed hope that we have in Christ. Please help us now with this study. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. was encouraging yesterday, and I think a part of someone uh, maybe inadvertently uh, trying to strengthen uh, me in my walk, uh, saying because I do like to say sometimes that I think about even as one little single cloud going by, I wonder if the Lord would step out on that one right there. And so uh, yesterday morning, uh, that somebody uh, mentioned and say, uh, what about that cloud right there? And so what a thought. And to even be thinking that, you know, as you go in uh, through your day. And so that did help, uh, helped with uh, visitation and to, to speak with others, trying to strengthen them and be an encouragement. Also, already being encouraged before we even uh, went out. And so we look here at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. And uh, in our studies before, I had probably about a year long or so uh, study in, in the uh, first couple of chapters of 1 Peter. And then just a few weeks ago, we finished up uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. But now as we go into chapter 3, we see this, likewise, ye wives. And so we'll actually go back a little bit into uh, chapter 2. Surely today the brethren need to be strengthened. If there was ever a day when the Christian needs to be strong, it's right now in these days. And so I need encouragement. We all need encouragement to be strong in the Lord. Our faith should not be waning just because the world presses upon us. Uh, we don't need to be weak Christians in this day and time. We need to be strong Christians. And I don't mean that we need to necessarily be in people's faces about their salvation, about their uh, their walk, anything like that, but we need to be strong as Christians today. Uh, if not, a lot of things will go lacking. They'll go lacking in our lives. They'll go lacking in those uh, lives that we want to touch and help for the Lord. And so today we need to be strong and we need to strengthen our brethren. I'm glad that Peter, through the Holy Spirit of God, wrote this letter to those that were scattered abroad. We believe in uh, Asia Minor, the uh, area of Turkey and those surrounding areas as people were in persecution uh, for their faith in Christ that they could be encouraged by a letter, by a teaching and a preaching of, of Peter, uh, given the word of God that uh, we can be encouraged and strengthened by. And so Peter writes here, likewise, ye wives. And what does he write about wives? About be in subjection to your own husbands. And then it goes farther uh, along the way with that. And so Peter writes to a particular people now that are also scattered with all these scattered people writing to wives uh, in particular in this. I believe uh, even though we see this uh, given to wives that there's other there's applications that could be for all of us uh, uh, in this uh, day and in, in this hour but uh, Peter says you wives be strong you wives be strong you know uh, that uh, when the Lord uh, made Adam he created Adam uh, he gave Adam a help meet for him and gave him a wife took uh, Eve from the rib of Adam uh, did not take him from a, a bone from his head so she could be over him. Uh, did not take uh, from a bone from his foot so he could just step on her. Took a rib, something from the side, so she could be beside him and be a wife that uh, she could uh, be uh, used of the Lord to help Adam with, with his life uh, as he tried to, to serve the Lord. And uh, we don't say that wives are, are perfect but, and, and that everyone has the perfect wife, but we say that the, the Lord has somebody for you. And so uh, I, I, I understand that some people... They, 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 they find a wife and no, that's not the one. And they have a, a spat. They go their own separate ways, find another wife. And, and they keep going along and going along trying to find the perfect person. The perfect person walked this earth some 2,000 years ago. And beside him, the God-man, there's not a perfect person. 
We are to be striving for perfection, but we are not perfect people. And God is helping us by his Holy Spirit to grow and to be strong. And so uh, I don't understand why somebody, you know, people do uh, church the, the same way as a relationship. Sometimes they look at something and, and somebody says something that they misconstrue and they, they maybe don't understand the way it was given or they got offended just right off the cuff and they're off looking for something else and looking for the perfect church. And I know it's been uh, said before that a, a preacher preached, he said, uh, he said uh, if you're looking for the perfect church, uh, don't go to that perfect church because you're going to mess it up. And so we're not perfect. We know that. We, we know this church is perfect. I mean, this church is not perfect. We know that. There's always things that we can do to improve. We're growing just like any other church, any other people. Uh, this is the perfect church for me. I'm glad that we're here. I'm glad uh, there, uh, when I was um, uh, looking for a church that um, there were some things that uh, we were looking for, in particular in our church, and sometimes that's what uh, men and what women do for a spouse. They look for some things in particular, some things, some likes, dislikes. Uh, you know all about those things. You're formulating some ideas and everything else. Peter writes here, likewise, ye wives, and he's going to give a, a teaching here. So the term wife, what does the term wife say to you? To me, that gives the idea of a relationship and I believe it's, it's good to have a relationship. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Relationship and fellowship are not the same things when it comes to Christianity. And we know that you cannot have a proper fellowship with the Lord if you don't have that relationship with the Lord. If you're not saved today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you cannot fellowship properly with the Lord. And so a husband and wife, they, they want that fellowship to be right and to be sweet. And so they have to have that right relationship. And uh, I'm glad for my relationship that I have with the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. November the 5th, 1981, 19 years of age, I nailed that down. The Lord nailed it down for me and settled that in my heart. I had my doubts uh, growing up as a teenager. Won't get into everything, and I uh, hope Mama doesn't uh, give too many things away. Uh, we sang the song this morning, It Is No Secret, but hey, you don't have to know everything about me, okay? Uh, there are things that uh, even a young person goes through that will give doubts about their salvation, truly uh, on into life. Sometimes adults have uh, doubts about their salvation. Nail that thing down. Lord Jesus Christ, I want to know that I'm saved. Please save me. Please give me that full assurance. I'm glad for the full assurance that Jesus Christ gives. And I'm glad for the sealing of the Holy Spirit in that salvation. I'm glad for that relationship that we can have uh, with Jesus Christ. And what a wonderful picture the Lord gives about relationships as husband and wife and gives about uh, Christ and the church, all kinds of things that can be applied uh, about a wife. So the term wife shows relationship, and uh, relationship is important for fellowship, and we, we realize that. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, nothing else. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Tom Brailsford didn't say that. Lord Jesus Christ said that, and he is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. That's the kind of relationship that I want. That's a perfect relationship with Jesus Christ. And so he gives us fellowship from there. So trust Jesus Christ as Savior. He can save you from your sins, from the guilt of sin. We uh, at times would, would preach and teach about sin versus sins. There is a, a sin as a sin guilt. There are sins that are are things that we do in life that are sins, the thoughts that we think, all of these things that are against the Lord that put us at enmity with Jesus Christ. And I don't want to be an enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want that relationship, and then I want that fellowship. Eternal life with Jesus Christ only comes how? By grace, through faith, right? That sounds scriptural to me. I think I read that somewhere. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, which means me too, not of myself, 
uh, not, not of yourselves. We're not the ones that need to be doing the work. Jesus Christ did the work. It's by grace through faith. And so uh, fellowship comes after relationship. And uh, Peter talks to, to wives. Likewise, you wives be in subjection to your own husbands. And I hope that everyone's listening. We're, we're good, Miss Angie. Okay. All right. Wives, be in subjection to your, your own husbands. Let's look at a few thoughts uh, here about the faith life that a wife uh, should have and truly all of us uh, should have. It's important for a wife to be strong in her uh, faith life. There are a lot of people that are lost, and so a relationship is hindered. You have a lost spouse. Either a wife is unsaved and the husband's saved, or you have a, a, a wife that's saved, a husband's not saved, and you can't have a good, true fellowship because there's still something lacking in that relationship. And that's the tie that binds. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's God Almighty working in that marriage. And surely things can, can happen to where a husband and wife are saved. And, of course, that would be more the, the perfect story that as a husband and wife uh, stand before you and they exchange their vows, they exchange rings, all these things, that both of them are saved. But sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes both go into a marriage unsaved, lost, headed, headed to hell. And then sometimes later in life, one of them will get saved. And so they, they live still out of, out of order, that both need to be saved. And so what, what does a wife do? The, Peter encourages and the Holy Spirit encourages a wife in her conversation. And conversation here is not just that, that talk as I'm talking this morning. A conversation is a manner of life, a way of living, living that faith life. And so the wife that wants to win, the wife who wins the husband is a wife that has that, that faith life and uh, is, is uh, loving and kind uh, to a husband, uh, wants him to be saved, is prayerful about that person being saved. I know there's been, uh, in particular, uh, ladies here that have doubts about a husband's salvation, and so they have brought it up uh, at times. I'm just not sure. You know, maybe the evidence is not there. Maybe there's not been that, that uh, clear-cut uh, testimony about a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so a wife says, I want to pray for my husband to be saved. And we've heard that and we've prayed with, with ladies before, in particular, about a husband needing to be saved. Likewise, ye wives. And so we, we look at that. Let me read something about likewise. Likewise means in the same way as. And we'll look at some things. We'll go back here in just a moment in chapter 2 about likewise, how that ties things in. But I wanted to read this about uh, what uh, Dr. Sexton included in his uh, study guide and, uh, and listen to this just briefly here. It says, so many husbands and wives have the idea that they must be fiercely competitive with one another. I counsel with couples who have been married for years, who are const constantly battling one another. This is not what God intended for marriage. To win, the wife must lose herself in obedience to the Lord and His command by following the clear teaching of God's Word in the matter of submission to her husband. In dealing with this subject, we are lifting up the wonderful position our Lord gives the wife. God has much to say about this in his word. And so let's look at this, take this first point and, and look at this uh, for a few moments this morning. Uh, the wife regards her submissive relationship to her husband. And so let's read again verse 1 of uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word... They also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. And let me just say here that uh, I do not believe that this is idea is uh, without the word is saying that you should never speak a word about Jesus Christ and testify about Jesus Christ. 
you know, it was several years ago that uh, maybe, I don't know if it was just one denomination in particular, but it seemed like the idea was to, uh, to have a lifestyle evangelism. And I think it hindered, in a way, uh, more people being saved because the idea was, well, just live right in front of somebody and they're going to want what you have and be saved. Now, that is an ideal thing, right? You know, uh, uh, it, it would be good if I lived my life in such a way that everybody flocked to me and said, what do you have that I don't have? What is it? Could you please explain something to me? By the way that you live, your, your countenance, your, the things you do, the things you talk about, the things you listen to, the things you won't say, the things you won't do, I want what you have. And I wish it was like that, that everybody would flock to me and say, hey, I want what you have, what you have. And I could say, Amen. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I wish it were that way. Every once in a while, it's that way. But that's not an everyday occurrence. I don't know about you. Maybe with you, that's what it is. And every day you have people flocking to you and say, you know, you are so different in a good way, but you're so different. What is it about you? What makes that difference? You can tell them what it's Jesus Christ. Can I tell you about him today? Because I have that relationship. Because I'm in subjection to him. I've given my life to him. And so I don't do the things that the world says, hey, come on and do. Come on, have this fun today. I try not to think like the world, act like the world, anything of the world, because I have a relationship. And I believe that is the picture that Peter's trying to paint here and the Holy Spirit's trying to paint here about a good, true relationship, a husband and, and wife. She regards her submissive relationship to her husband. That word likewise in chapter 3 points us back to some things in, in chapter 2. So let's look at chapter 2. We'll read again the verses we had read uh, before when we started this study and verse 21 and following uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 2. And the Bible says here, for even here unto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Well, I tell you, that, that stirs me right there. To have a relationship with the shepherd and bishop of our souls, and we, we spoke about that. But Jesus Christ took my sins on his own body on the tree. He suffered and bled and died for me, and for you, and for you, and for you, for the sins of the whole world. And Jesus has eternal life, and uh, boy, that's going to be something just to be able to see his glory and be a part of that and see, be in his uh, presence and see him in all his glory one day. Uh, we can still have the presence of the Lord. I'm glad for that. I'm glad that we can have salvation in, in Jesus Christ. Look with me at Philippians chapter 2. We think about the example that Jesus Christ was and is to us. Philippians chapter 2 and starting in verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. We'll read several verses here. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. 
And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, every tongue should be confessing. Every knee should be bowing. And we know that one day every knee will bow. One day every knee will bow. If they're not bowing now, one day they will bow because they'll be in, in the presence and in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. But then because they're lost, they will be judged. And they'll be, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And so I'm glad for that relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm glad that Jesus was obedient even to the cross, to the death, to the, to the cross. That he was submissive to the will of God. And that does not take anything away from him being God. And we have uh, in God's word the truth of this, that uh, we have Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. We have uh, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. And we know that this is not three gods. We don't worship three gods. We worship God in his trinity in unity. We worship God. And Jesus Christ is very God. And I'm glad that he came and humbled himself. What a picture right there that he would even humble himself to take on the form of a servant. I'm glad for the things that God has included in his word. It gives us such a picture of a, of a humble attitude, of servitude, of submission, and Jesus does that for us. Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross of Calvary. And so Peter wrote, likewise, ye wives. Likewise, you, we wives. Look with me at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I think uh, uh, Hebrews is something we, we probably look at just about every week, uh, whether it's pastor, a visiting preacher, uh, here in Sunday school, a uh, very familiar portion of Scripture, but it so uh, can be applied uh, to us. And we, we, we look at this here. And well, let's read the uh, first three verses here of Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds." You think the writer of Hebrews wanted us to be strong as brethren, be strong in our faith? I believe so. Well, how do we do that? I believe it's found there in verse 2 even, looking unto Jesus. You know, in our faith life, we need to be looking unto Jesus. And not just as the world would say, well, I'm going to look to the Lord. I'm, I'm going to try to live like, like the Lord would want me to live and never accept what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary for them. You know what that person's going to do? One day they're going to die, and they're going to pass away in their sins and still in their lost condition because they've never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. Maybe they, they lived a good life, maybe better than anyone in, even in this room, uh, but still lost because they did not accept Jesus Christ as Savior. And so we look unto Jesus in faith. We do that in faith, and we sure do want the faithful life. So looking unto King Jesus, look at, uh, with me at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 22. Ephesians 5 and verse 22. Wives, 
Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. How can you be holy and without blemish? You can't do it of yourself, can you? It's only in Jesus Christ. And he gives his righteousness. I'm glad when I was saved, the Lord put on me his robe of righteousness. And so I could be righteous. I could be holy because he is holy. And I, and I strive to, to be uh, holy because our mighty God is holy. And so Christ gave himself for the church. And we see the teaching here about wives and about husbands giving us this picture, this glorious picture as the word of God tends to do for us. And uh, we, we want uh, to be uh, without spot and without blemish. We cannot be. We cannot be guiltless without Jesus Christ. Uh, now, I'm guilty of a lot of things uh, in your eyes uh, today. There would be things you say, but you do this and you do that. If you were to ask uh, Miss Angie this morning, she'd say, oh, yeah, let me get out my list. And uh, she'd go to town and uh, uh, those types of things. And that's the, the way it is. Sometimes it's, it's like that. But in the eyes of God, we say, what list? Mm, what a thought. Because Jesus Christ took that list and ripped it all up. Buried my sins, my guilt in the depths of the sea. Threw them as far as from the east as from the west. Not to be found again. That guilt is gone. Do I, do I not sin? Am I perfect? No, that, that's not the way it goes. But I am guiltless before God because of the Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Lord paints these wonderful, wonderful pictures, these relationship pictures, these fellowship pictures, these pictures of submission and what the Lord Jesus Christ did as an example for us. Likewise, ye wives... Verse 22 here of Ephesians, this is Paul, this is another writer here, still under the, the instruction, the, um, the Holy Ghost, writing these things, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. It's hard to do things as unto the world, isn't it? Well, sometimes not so hard in our lives. We, we tend to go the, do the things of the world and go that way. The Bible says, submit as unto the Lord. A wife that is in submission, a husband that submits, is, has to do it as unto the Lord, or else it's just not going to last. It might work for a little while, but it's just not going to last. Verse 24 says, Therefore, as this church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in every thing. I like that. Look uh, back at uh, verse 18 there in Ephesians chapter 5, if you're still there, and following, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. You know, we can submit our ways. We could be humble, can't we, toward each other? Just as wives would submit to a husband, a husband can submit to a wife. Doesn't mean that he has to be obedient. The wife is the head of the household because that, that would not be along with Scripture. You know, but we can be humble to each other. We can have that spirit of humbleness as we go out into the world this week that they would see a spirit of humbleness, submitting ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the ways that he would have us, to, the ways that he would have us to walk, walking humbly before him as in the sight of God. 
in the fear of God. All of these things that the Holy Spirit would, would include here. As unto the Lord. And so as we close this thought out today, wives, likewise, you wives, let's be more like Jesus Christ. He was our example Men, you may not say, you say, well, this has been a, a, been a lesson to wives, and so I haven't listened to a thing you said. I hope that's not the case. Because we gave example, even here as the Lord gave example, that Jesus Christ loved the church as a husband would faithfully love his bride. Jesus Christ gave himself for the church, for you and for me. And so what's our part in this? Not to work for that relationship, but to work because of that relationship. Thank you, dear Lord, for salvation and for working in each and one, every one of us, right? And we could do that as we submit and do things as unto the Lord. So with that, let's, let's close out. I hope the Lord has spoken to you and helped you and strengthened you in, in some way uh, even this morning. I know as we, we talk about sometimes relationship and a, a husband and a wife, you have different things that you think about. But let's think about the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about our relationship with him. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you know that you know that you know that Jesus has saved you from your sins? You've accepted that, the work that he did on the cross of Calvary. And then are you enjoying a good, sweet fellowship? As, as in that marriage, as a husband and wife could enjoy sweet, you know, it can be done. A fellowship can be had. And so are you enjoying a sweet fellowship with the Lord today? I, I hope so. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you so much for the likewise of our text today. As it points to Jesus Christ. And everything that we say and we do, may it be to your honor and to your glory. Dear Lord, there's probably all kinds of thoughts that have gone through our minds this morning on this subject. But may they all be directed to you, dear Lord. May we walk that faith life and have that sweet fellowship because we enjoy that relationship with Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And so I pray that other people would be saved before it's eternally too late. And then I pray that they might enjoy that fellowship with you, dear Lord. My, 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 how things could be so much different at times if I just subject myself to you. Submit to your will and to your ways. Look into your word and search out what you would have for me to do. The right spirit that you would have me to be in. Dear Lord, may I walk with you. May my conversation be right. May my speech be right. May my thoughts be right. I pray that you continue to strengthen us. Thank you for what you've done uh, for us already. I pray that we might be strong, that we could go out and help to, to, to win others to Jesus Christ and to strengthen the brethren. And I believe that's the encouragement today. Uh, we thank you for all your, your, your ways, dear Lord, for your holy word that we've been able to impart and have a part of today. Uh, we pray for the, the preaching hour, please, uh, all the singing all the testifying, all the fellowship, all the preaching, everything as we read into your word today. I uh, pray that it would be sweet to us and we would gather in that you would apply what needs to be applied in our lives today. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Amen.